Mitigation Banking Group. And on our panel today is Bill Kerr with BKI and also John Lesman with Biotech Consulting. So I'm going to begin talking about a little overview on mitigation banking, uh, just to kind of get a little glimpse of the room. Who's purchased mitigation credits before? Wonderful. Has any environmental consultants in the room actually been involved in the permitting of a mitigation bank? Wonderful, good. So this is a good group, um, and we're just gonna kind of do an overview and talk about the mitigation banking in Florida and the climate of um, the industry. So what is a mitigation bank? As you probably already know, uh, a mitigation bank is um, restoration and cre or creation or preservation of a wetland function, and it's a large tract of land that has been put under conservation easement that will generate credits based off the restoration efforts. And those credits can be sold to developers within that same geographic drainage basin for any kind of adverse impact. The history of mitigation banking, um, it's, we're still um, a uh, very uh, immature uh, industry. We're growing, we're about you know, 25 years old, and so it's, uh, we're learning a lot as we go. And as you can see, um, back in 72 is really when the Clean Water Act was passed. And uh, moving forward, uh, 88, no net loss of the wetland values from the first Bush administration. In uh, 93, the mitigation banking started taking shape. Uh, and now, um, 95, uh, guiding principles were released and more from EPA and the Army Corps Engineers. Uh, 2008, kept going moving forward. 2015, memorandum on uh, making mitigation banks more appropriate for using uh, uh, federal mitigation. And now in 2018, we are advancing into some unknown territory, uh, possibly transferring the core to the state as far as permitting regulation. So federally permitted mitigation banks in Florida. So over the past 25 years, we've grown uh, substantially. Uh, even over the past 10 years, we've grown about 50%. There was about 35 mitigation banks in 2006. Now we have about 80, and there's another 30 pending. And uh, it's a long process to get a mitigation bank permitted, as some of you may know. Uh, with the state, you could average about maybe one to two plus years. With the core, we're talking two to six years plus. So you gotta make sure that you anticipate those time frames. A lot of mitigation bankers that are new to the industry are not aware of this. Something that needs to be addressed up front. So the due diligence of mitigation bank. Uh, other than time, we gotta make sure that we have the right land, and location, soils. We gotta make sure that we understand the expenses up front, such as the permitting and the costs, uh, which we'll, we'll talk more about with the experts of the industry, like Bill Kerr and John Lesman, who did this as, um, for a living. And then permitting, maintenance, and monitoring, uh, the financial expenses uh, for financial assurances, short term and long term. Uh, and then most importantly, the market for the mitigation bank. Determining what kind of um, uh, geographic uh, service area you would have in that mitigation bank and uh, what kind of demand will there be? What projects are forthcoming? And then supply, how big is your mitigation bank? What kind of restoration activities are you doing? How many credits are you anticipating on generating? And will you have enough supply to meet demand? Land and soil. So the average mitigation bank, they range from anywhere from 151 acres on a small end to 25,000 acres or 23,000 acres, which is the long, largest mitigation bank in Florida and even in the country. So they average about 3,000 acres. Um, and vegetation, soils, hydrology, you've got to make sure you've got the right piece of land. You can look at a lot of different pieces of land and it's got to be the perfect situation to be a potential mitigation bank. Site conditions. You can't just find a pristine wetland and think this is wonderful, I'm gonna put a conservation easement on it. We have to have some restoration activities for that lift to get credits. So anything from hy hydrological improvements, prescribed uh, fires, uh, invade, uh, eradicating the invasive species, number of activities you can do to generate credits. Also the, the landscape. <clears throat> you wanna be surrounded by other uh, conservation lands, uh, maybe owned by the state. Create that missing corridor uh, for the environment. Location, 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 just like real estate, wherever your mitigation bank is, whatever drainage uh, basin that you're in, that will be your service area. And any project within that basin, you can provide mitigation credits to. You wanna make sure that you might have the right type of credits, maybe forested or herbaceous within that same area, what kind of systems are there? And also, what about the demand? Looking at um, different mitigation bank leisures to understand that. 
Moving back, these are the five different drainage basins in Florida. Uh, encompasses 86 different uh, drainage basins, five water management districts. And then talking about those financial assurances. Mitigation banks require short-term and long-term financial assurances. Short-terms for the construction, you have to put all that, those funds up front. Long-term for to make sure that it's gonna be managed in perpetuity. That also has to be put up front. So there's a lot of costs that you need to anticipate. In addition to the permitting costs, the maintenance fees, and the monitoring. The market demand for mitigation credits. So if you have a mitigation bank, a potential one, you can look at the other mitigation banks that might have um, uh, inventory in the market and see how much they sell a year. Now, if you are gonna get into the mitigation banking industry, you have to understand that it's very, uh, uh, it's not like a commercial property where you can anticipate you know, a, a certain amount of credits sold a year. Sometimes you can sell two credits, sometimes you can sell 20 credits in a year. It's very fluctuated. And uh, a mitigation banker needs to be told that and uh, to be sure that he understands what he might be getting into. The cash flow is not, uh, it could be, it fluctuates. Okay, so a credit release schedule. So if you had 1,100 acres and you, or 1,300 acres and you got 211 credits, you would not be able to get all credit, all those credits up front. It's a release schedule and you get 20% or so for recording a conservation easement and putting up those financial assurances. And then you get more credits as you do those activities, such as uh, prescribed fire or exotic remo uh, invasive remo removal. And it goes on like that. And I wanted to play just a quick video for you. Um, Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank is located in Polk, Osceola County in Florida. And um, it is a restoration uh, success story. It's been permitted uh, back in 97, so it's been uh, a 20 year uh, process of restoring uh, habitat back to its natural state. So please watch this. Hi, I'm Victoria Colangelo with the Mitigation Banking Group, and I'm here with Alton Owens uh, here at Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank, over 3,500 acres located on the Osceola Polk County line in Davenport, Florida. And we are looking at the restoration efforts that have been in place since 97. So we're standing on phase three of the, of the Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank. Um, this is an active restoration component of this particular bank. Uh, originally, this was a cattle farm. And then after that, a commercial sod farm operation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the prescription here was eliminating all those exotic invasive pasture grasses and restoring this native pine flatwoods community. We've been at it since 2011 and uh, approaching the finish line. You can see here, we've got a nice stand of oaks that are coming up. Uh, we have documented over 400 species of native plants here. It's been a long road, but we're yeah. nearly there. It's a wonderful restoration project. One of the big successes of Florida restoration projects. So Victoria, now we're standing on a, on a different part of our phase three enhancement. Um, this area focuses on hydrologic restoration. Um, so whereas we just came from an area where we were restoring the vegetative communities mm -hmm. here, what we were doing is reversing the human impacts on the stream system. So historically, this, this bog here was a drain channelized ditch that, was, that had open access to cattle. So cattle would come down, defecate in the stream, graze the vegetation, destroy the natural flow here. Uh, and also we had this road that we're standing on. So this was a, a means for the farmer to get across this system, but it was way higher than this natural system would have been used to. So these culverts that are placed in were only passing flood flows. Um, so part of the restoration was redesigning this road and inputting culverts at lower elevations so we can pass more of a normal storm event. And what that does is connect the upstream habitats to the downstream habitats. When we have a large rain event like we do here uh, in this part of Florida in the summers, we get very intense flows coming down through here, which can lead to downstream degradation. So we've installed step pools down through the system to dissipate that energy um, and reconnect the system. So we're, in, we're on phase two of this of Reedy Creek Mitigation Bank here. And you know, this is the community that we're, uh, we're heading towards on, on phase three. Mm -hmm. um, so this is about 14 years old. It's three or four years older than, than the area we just came from. And what we see here is we've completely eradicated all of those exotic pasture grasses. Mm -hmm. And that's allowed for, you know, complete colonization of all our native species. So we've met all our final performance criteria, all of our, our final credits have been released, and what we have here is, you know, a self-sustaining functional system. Uh, it's in perpetual management, and this place will be like this for a very long period of time. Well, thank you, Alton, for bringing us out here and showing us the different restoration activities and all the different phases, and we can see the differences of what we're actually trying to implement. So thank you so much. It's great to see you again. You too. All right, take care.